Slice, peel, grate, squeeze, mix, boil, fry, sprinkle, roast, blend. Add the star of the dish. Olives from Spain. Green, black, stuffed olives. Are you ready to cook? Any time is a good time to enjoy olives from Spain. Discover the recipes with olives from Spain and make the difference. Hello, hello, guys. How are you doing? A very, very good morning to the viewers in Spain and good afternoon to our viewers in India. Um, well, thank you for first of all taking out this time on a Saturday bright afternoon in Mumbai where it's not raining. <laughs> Yay to all of us! It is not raining. So thank you. Welcome to all us from Spain in India. And today's session is all about um, fusion tapas. And um, that is what we are doing. Uh, we're going to get a special guest uh, from Spain. Um, and I'm going to introduce uh, him to you guys in a short while. But before uh, we can get Chef on this live again, um, people who have just joined in, my name is Haran Koila. Well, I've been the brand ambassador for Spanish olives in India for almost three years now. It's been a journey. Uh, we've uh, had a very fond uh, relationship because I love olives and one of my uh, really bad puns uh, goes like i olive you i olive you does it make sense you know if you have to say i love okay, okay i'm not going to bore you with my <laughs> uh, puns but yeah so uh, i was talking about fusion tapas and uh, you know why i'm thinking of fusion tapas because i was supposed to be in spain at this very moment uh, this year but guess what i am in my living room I'm not in Spain uh, because of the pandemic that we are all uh, stuck with. Whether we are in Spain or you're in India, everybody is going through the same thing, right? So um, I have unfortunately not been able to make it to Spain this year. And trust me, I am missing out on a lot. Uh, but to cover up the gaps and fill up um, a few experiences that I couldn't have this year, I thought, why not virtually travel to Spain and you guys can travel with me. And that's the reason today we are um, traveling to Spain by talking about tapas, by talking about Spanish culture, Spanish food. We have a Spanish chef um, who is going to meet us virtually on this live. How many people on the live have uh, been to Spain? Raise your hands, please. Raise your hand if you have been to Spain. What are your favorite uh, places in Spain? Tell me. I would love to know. Hopefully, I will be able to travel next year. Uh, not this year. Uh, so tell me, tell me about your favorite places in Spain. I am watching. Who has been to Spain? Who is the lucky one uh, who has been there? Have you had Spanish tapas? Uh, which parts of Spain have you been to? Have you gone to those amazing bars that I have Googled online? Uh, tell me, tell me about your Spanish experiences. Have you had olives uh, in Spain? Because you're talking about uh, olives a lot. Just to tempt you guys a little, I'll tell you how Spanish olives look. Look at those gorgeous beauties. Like, I mean, guys, I mean, Spanish olives. Um, these are green queen olives. And look at how big, juicy and uh, fleshy they are. So without further ado, hmm. I think egg olive to khana banta hai, right? So one, one olive uh, to start uh, today's session while I'm reading your comments. For where all have you been in Spain? But um, this chef, now let me tell you which chef we're going to get um, on today's um, masterclass uh, live from Spain with us. We have uh, chef Nicolas Roman and um, he was awarded the best tapa 2020 um, in Spain. Uh, nobody knows tapas better than him. I was actually supposed to meet him when I was in Spain. Um, but he very sweetly agreed uh, to be with us uh, today on this live. And you know what? He's super cool. Um, he's uh, somebody who's also been to India. And we will ask him about his uh, Indian experiences. Uh, best tapas uh, in 2020. Matlab, so stay with us. Because Chef Nicholas is going to join us. And he's going to teach us a very easy but yet a very surprising recipe. Um, that we are going to learn from him. Now he will be like, oh, you can uh, make olives and you can make tapas like this also. Uh, that's an interesting way of doing it. So I, I spoke to him before this live and he, he, he gave me an idea as to what all he's going to make today. How is he going to show his tapas? 
and you know tapas makes for a wonderful starter for any party uh, or um, now it's a weekend so you can actually make tapas at home and that's the reason we are getting uh, chef nicolas on this live today so guys without further ado how about we get chef nicolas with us hello hello <laughs> chef how are you saranj i am doing excellent and uh, wow you have like a fancy setup i am in my living room you see i'm in the restaurant cooking. i'm in the restaurant yes i came this morning i prepared everything and I wanted to show you what the experience was of doing a tapa in the restaurant, which I'm, I have every ingredient available. So I'm, I'm not holding back. <laughs> that is so cool. Also, um, I, I, considering you are standing in your restaurant, what time is it right now? Uh, right now, it's uh, half past nine in the morning. Oh, that's early. <laughs> We've got early you for us because. <laughs> Yesterday we finished the service at one o'clock in the morning, so I I had not much sleep, but I had some olives to power myself up. <laughs> you look really fresh for uh, for um, nine thirty a.m. Yeah. I must say that must olives and, olives and coffee. That's the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool. So, chef, yeah. how about um, you give us a small intro about how did the best um, the award for best Spanish tapas in 2020 come to you. Uh, how has the journey been like, and um, what does it mean to you, Spanish tapas? So the thing is, tapas. I think it's one of the most iconic thing from Spain. If you come to Spain, everyone wants to have tapas, wants to go to a bar, wants to have some drinks with the tapas, which is essentially a small bite or something to share with someone, with a friend. And so I had kind of a big responsibility to to get myself to the to the well. It was the biggest fair from Spain, which did the the tapa, which is uh, Madrid Fusion, which is one of the biggest fairs. And I got there to the to the challenge to do a tapa, and I did like a really fusion tapa with a lot of ingredients and and really technical, which had uh, even a uh, uh, edible uh, crab leg, the whole bone. Edible could, crab leg? Yeah, you could eat the crab <laughs> as a whole thing. So it, we made like a, a texture kind of similar to the crab and you could eat it. It had some spices, some citrus, everything from Spain, which had some seafood too. So it was really crazy. And I got the prize, so here that I am. I was really happy. Cool. And you're somebody who loves to innovate, who, who loves to sort of, um, you know, have your own creations uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, tapas. So how do you come up with, with recipes like these? Uh, what is the thought behind, um, you know, mind of a chef or mind of Chef Nicolas? Uh, how do you... The, the first thing is to treat the product well. So... Find your product, local product, and try to emphasize them with small things. For example, if in India you want to make a tapa, you take local products, local spices, local ingredients, and you can add something from outside, for example, the olives, which is yeah. our from Spain, and mm -hmm. emphasize those flavors, uh, local flavors, with something added. And that's the idea. I want to take a classic recipe or something which is innate to our country and then twist it a little bit to have it i don't know pop a bit and make it more fun and so yeah. that's the idea on making new textures uh new ways to handle every ingredient i don't know that's I the idea that you mentioned textures because textures is 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 the playing field for any chef right you change the yeah. texture of a ingredient or a dish and it changes everything yeah, that's um, the idea. I think the idea is if you have a really plain dish, you need to add some crisp to it. So you need to find a way to do that crisp with the same ingredients to make more attractive the, 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 the dish and the tapa in this case. That is so cool because we're talking so much about tapas. Uh, chef, I'm really missing Spain. 
um what's the culture like there if i were to be in spain this year and if i had that opportunity to hang out with guys what does usually um a spanish evening um for a food connoisseur or somebody who loves his food and drinks looks like so i think the the way to go here in spain is we get up in the morning and for example a sunday if you want to go to have some tapas you go early you don't go at lunch time you go at 12 o'clock in the morning uh, 11 o'clock in the morning sort of things yeah but here in spain we have lunch later we have lunch at 2 o'clock in the afternoon or 3 o'clock oh, in the high afternoon. five in india yeah. as well <laughs> <laughs> so so that's the thing we have uh, lunch really late and we like to have the tapas before or even have the tapas as lunch you go to the bar and you stay at the bar from or you can even change from bar to bar and have some some wine from uh, the, to the, from the first one to the last one at least you have five or six couples of wine a uh, couple of wines and uh, you have some tapas with them you can afterwards have lunch or just stay with the tapas which is really versatile and usually you get a little bit drunk from going to tapas which isn't bad which is <laughs> that's the thing and then um, usually yeah really tasty and the thing is just a bite so you can share something which is really tasty it makes your mouth explode from flavors and then you rinse it with a little bit of wine which is also really good for your health so everything is fine plain tapas what does tapas mean uh, it means so, bite sized no tapas literally means a uh, cover okay a oh. tapa is something to cover so the idea from tapa came from for example i have here a, a glass of wine mm. okay so the idea of tapa was to cover the wine so no nothing could enter in the wine so you could cover the wine have the tapa and then drink the wine and then have another tapa cover the wine so no flies inside no one drops anything <laughs> inside So that's that the smart way of uh, serving your wine guys and that's yeah. how tapa was, was born is to cover yeah, that's, that's the 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 name came from that and then as everything everything evolves and it, it turned into fusion tapas and uh, traditional tapas because you cannot uh, cover the the wine with an olive it's impossible mm. so we made some stuff for example a uh, bread with a salad with olives and some other things you can make even a uh, uh, olive puree and dip it like with a bread or cover the bread as you can see in the picture that looks delicious and sounds great mm. yeah you can even have it twisted like uh, you can add some spices inside the olive uh, puree you can add some garlic some herbs everything so you you have a a world a world of of things to add inside so because you mentioned spices and that rings a big bell for any indian spices uh, <laughs> I, i can't steer away from that topic that um, when before the live when we spoke i told you that a small challenge that you have today while making your style of spanish tapas is you have to use a bit of india in that so our indian viewers can also have fun um, yeah. so how does your repertoire or knowledge of indian food look like Well, I've got some experience. I told you before. I went to India twice. I went to Bombay, Mumbai, and then also to Bangalore. And I remember being in Mumbai. I had some um, some uh, a lunch. I think in a in a chef school. So in a in a school for chefs, because I was doing some uh, some chats for for the guys for the students. explain what you went to about 20 culinary schools yes i went to 20 culinary schools and i did some some conference and i told the the students about uh, spanish cuisine and about oral uh, all the ingredients from spanish cuisine and and then i had lunch there and then i tried some i don't know what was it uh, some some sauce i think i i think it was something with uh, with spinach i think with cream okay. and it was it really really spicy 
Ooh. It was really spicy, but with a lot of flavor, which I, I, I liked a lot. And the thing is, I, I tried to handle the spice trying some uh, white rice, some plain rice. And, and the plain rice was full of uh, chilies. So it was <laughs> spicier than the sauce. So the remedy was harder than the, than the, the actual sauce and the uh, problem. So you, you didn't get uh, relief with the rice either. You had to eat a spicy palak or spinach and a spicy yeah, rice. I, I had a little bit of lassi afterwards and that's it. Ooh. Sweet or salt? Sour. Sweet or sour? Uh, sour. It was sour. sour. Buttermilk. Uh, yeah. Delicious. Delicious stuff. So, Chef, um, what kind of Indian ingredients are you using in your tapas today? How about we check your ingredients out? People have been yes. waiting on this live to see what Chef Nicholas is going to do here. Uh, this morning. So let's see your uh, large inventory of ingredients. So what we have today, I'm going to talk. First, we've got the queens, okay, the olives. Uh, we've got the green one, the black one, the queen olive, which is the gordal, called in Spain, which is really big and juicy, as you told. Uh, then I've got some other ingredients, which are garlic, okay. I'm going to use a little bit of garlic in some of the ingredients of the recipe then i'm going to use some ginger okay oh, some ginger those are elements garlic and ginger yes yes that's it then i'm going to use a little bit that's for uh tartar of olives which i'm going to do okay i'm going to marinate the olives like with a small sauce a little bit of lemon juice and uh, the spices a little bit of salt a little bit of paprika the sweet one, okay? In, in Spain, we have the sweet and the spicy one. I know you use paprika too in India. Yeah. So I'm going to use a little bit of, of spices. Then I'm going to end the, the dish with some uh, coriander, okay? I'm, I have the, the sprouts, the really small ones, okay? So I'm going to use the sprouts with our, which are really tasty in flavor, which are really strong. So that's the so way you, I'm going to end. Do you have like a Spanish name for coriander or is coriander called coriander? It's called coriander. We, we call it uh, cilantro in, in Spanish. Okay. Yeah. Cilantro. So, cilantro. And, and well, it's the same thing as they call them in South America. And here in Spain, we call it cilantro as in India, we call it coriander. Mm. So uh, then we've got here, if you can see... I've got the main ingredient is the olive, and Ooh. it's going to go with a really Fresh. big red prawn. Yeah. So here uh, I'm staying in Valencia now. I have the restaurant here. And in Valencia, it's, uh, we have the sea just by the side. So uh, there is a lot of seafood, fish, and also with the weather comes the olives. Okay. We have also uh, a lot of olive tree the i think the 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 zone from spain which has the most olive trees is uh, andalusia which is in the Andalus. south and yeah. usually the best uh, olives comes came from from andalusia come from andalusia and here which is really typical we have the citrus that's why we're going to use some citrus in the recipe okay Super. so i think I think we can start doing some stuff. Let's. I am ready. I'm ready to feast with my eyes. Okay. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna explain what I did with the olives. Okay. So with the olives, uh, what I did first, I, I took the black ones, I debone the black ones, okay, and I dry them. Okay. So the idea is, I don't know if we can get the camera to go come a little bit closer. So yeah. the idea is to dry them which makes them really small, okay, but really crispy. And then what I did is a powder of the olives, okay? I don't know Ooh. as the, the thing is yeah, black. How long do you dry them? I dry them. You can do it. I have a, a dehydrate, dehydrator, yeah. okay? So yeah. the thing is, I think at home you can do it with uh, the oven. You can use the oven at 90 degrees, 80 degrees. And yeah, let the them possible, uh, temperature. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you let them there for about two, three hours. So they dry, mm -hmm. and you get that uh, really crispy and with all the flavor. Because what get out of the olive is the water. So you get the the flavor of the olive and crispiness. So 
and it's what we, we were talking about before uh, texture what we were searching about some texture mm -hmm. which is really crispy and we're going to use it on the plate then what i did is with the green olives i marinated them with some uh, herbs okay and what i did is just chop them okay peel them so we debone the olive okay so we can chop them and make the the tartar okay then what we're going to do is i'm going to explain you what i did with the prawns first because it's the base of the dish okay the base of the dish is the prawns and we did yeah. a kind of carpaccio but what we did is just uh hit the prawns okay I'm so if you had you, I, chef, what does a carpaccio mean well carpaccio means uh usually eating something raw really thin as it's yeah. really thin you don't need to cook it because you can cook it it's so thin it's gonna even cook in your mouth because it's so thin the temperature of your mouth is going to cook the ingredient so and usually you you have a dressing which is a bit sour so it's going to cook also the, yeah so what we're going to do is just peel the prawns okay you take the head off and then you peel them okay just regular one the regular way to do it just yeah. try not to break the meat okay okay just as simple as this okay and what we do is just use some parchment paper i'm going to show you here i'm going to just use one because i don't want to waste it so yeah I, I use two for the recipe which is a really big prawn but if you want to do it at home you can take smaller ones or even shrimp whatever you want you can do it with whatever whatever you want because the important thing here is the dressing not the main ingredient okay so what we do here is we can come down okay we take the prawn we take two parchment papers and just crush it so it makes a paste a really big paste and then this is the result okay oh this i i made the the same uh, size of the two prawns or one prawn chef sorry that's two prawns that's two prawns that's cool. two prawns so with two prawns just two prawns you have a whole dish which is really good so if you have smaller ones it might take three four or even five okay so I'm not going to hit it because it's going to be really noisy and I don't want to <laughs> wake up everyone here in Spain. And <laughs> so we do this, okay? And what we're going to do, I'm going to start plating, okay? We take the parchment paper really slowly, okay? We try. So after beating it, it, you keep it in the fridge for a while? Yes, you can leave it in the fridge or you can leave it rest at room temperature for about. 10 to 20 minutes so it gets warmer and you can heat it a little bit with a torch which we're going to do later at the end and you can cook a little bit the prawn okay so i'm going to take the parchment paper beautiful i like how uh, uh with the light hand you're taking the parchment paper off and i think that is where the skill lies yeah so now you flip it you drop it here yeah. and you let it rest so it sticks to the to the plate the bottom of the plate yes and then we will take the parchment paper before finishing the dish so what we're going to do next is just uh, marinate a little bit of olives okay so we're going to do like a tartar which is you can do it with the olives which uh, have a texture um, kind of like meat so you can do yeah. a vegetarian, vegetarian or even vegan uh, dish with the olives, Epic. which is really good because I, I went to some uh, vegetarian and even uh, Jain, Jain restaurants. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, you, you're aware of the Jain community. So um, yeah. they usually um, try to avoid anything that grows under the ground. And, um, yeah, that's it. That's it. But the olives don't go under the ground yeah <laughs> so what we're going to do is just chop a little bit of olive okay we're going to chop them finely okay 
the green one, mm -hmm. they will have a lot of flavor. So you chop it finely until you have a, a tartar consistency. Yeah. More also, like these are very fleshy and meaty, right? Um, in in yeah. nature. Really fleshy. So that's the idea. The thing is, it it looks like uh, meat, which is kind of good as a, as you you bite and you chew to the olive through the olive, you will get that texture, kind of the a little bit of meat. So what we're gonna do is just put them on a bowl. So. Dame cinco minutos que te atienda un chico. The, we have some uh, people bringing food to the restaurant. Oh, the tires. Produce as yeah. So the thing is, we take the, the chopped olive, okay? And we start adding some ingredients. Okay, we take garlic, okay? We crush the garlic a little bit with the hand, okay? Nice. And it sticks a little bit. <laughs> and Good then, so what we're going to do? Flavor. Yeah, a lot of flavor. So what we're going to do is take the the ginger and the garlic, okay? Both things yeah. uh, have a bit of ginger peel here, and we take a grater, okay? So uh -huh. what we're going to do is just grate a little, a little bit of ginger, a little bit of garlic. So really, really fine. Really, really fine. So it's going to do like a paste. Okay? Yeah. Like your paste, in India, you use garlic and ginger to make stuff. Yeah. Ginger so garlic paste is like the most common uh, ingredient in our inventory. Yeah, I know. I know. So we're using the, the most popular ingredient from uh, Indian cuisine, which are garlic and, and, and ginger. Then we're going to add a little bit of lemon. Okay? You can use your lemon, which is the green one, the small one. Yeah. I think you have that. Yeah. And you can use that, and you grate the lemon, and you do the paste, okay? And what we're going to do is just drop this, okay, here. We're going to add a little bit of, uh, this is a lemon, lemon gel. What we did is we used some potato starch, okay? Some potato starch and lemon juice, and we blend it. And what it does is just give a really thick texture. You're going to see. When you drop it, it's more like a gel. Oh, yeah. It's almost like a lemon sauce. Yeah, it's a sauce, but with uh, the uh, uncooked flavor. Because if you cook flavor, and if you cook the lemon, it loses a little bit of the sourness and the flavor. So what we do is just have it like this, and we're going to mix this with a, a little bit of paprika, but just a small touch, okay? So if somebody does not have that uh, lemon gel, they can choose to just put lemon juice, right? Yes, that's it. It just tastes like lemon juice. So the yeah. idea is that, and then a little bit of the olive oil, okay? As we're using olives, a common thing mm -hmm. is to have olive oil from the olive. Yeah, olive oil, yeah. Just a little bit of olive oil, and we're gonna mix this, okay? It's going to make like a tartare and it's going to have like that creamy texture. Plus, it has a lot of flavor because you added the garlic and ah, the ginger, the paprika. Okay, so we're going to set this apart and we're going to start preparing the, the other things. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, sp spring onion, okay, and just Use it as decoration. And what yeah. I'm going to do is just chop the onion the long way, OK? So what I do is just roll it. I'm going to show you like this. Just roll it and chop it, and then put it oh. in the in. Huh? I'm going to chop it like this, OK? This I take apart. and then really thinly you do like small cuts like this 
and I've I put it in cool cruise We're having bad reception, I think, but I'm gonna continue. So yeah. what I, I, I'm yeah. doing can hear you. is just having the, the spring onion in ice cold water with some ice. So it's gonna be crispier than it was before, okay? So what we're gonna do next is just start plating and I'm gonna explain all the, the ingredients and what I've done with them as we go and plate, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just yeah. take the, the paper, I'm gonna press it a little bit so it sticks to the plate. And let's see if I have a chance to do it properly. So if it's colder, it's easier to take the paper out, okay? Yeah. So what we're gonna do is just take the paper away carefully because we want everything on the plate, nothing on the par parchment paper. I want to eat everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not waste. Not half of it. Half of it, yeah. Yeah. So I'm taking everything and what I did, which I haven't told yet, is with the rest of the prawn, okay, with the head and the legs and the, 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 the shell, what I did is a sauce, okay? I did a sauce with uh, some paprika, some shallots, some uh, uh, butter, okay? I used like a ghee. For the yeah. for the sauce, too. yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm trying to use a lot of uh, Indian ingredients and ways of cooking. So I did a really thick prawn sauce, which we're gonna use at the end, and it's gonna have a lot of flavor of prawn because all the flavor of the prawn always is in the head. Okay. That's uh, very, very detailed, and um, I love how gently you have taken the parchment paper off. Um, it, it's it's taken a lot of effort, for sure. Yeah, it's taking for one tapa, it's taking a lot of effort. So what we're going to do is just start using the ingredients, okay? I'm going to torch a okay. little bit the prawn, okay? So with the torch, yeah. we're going to give it a gentle burn Charge like this people. yeah so it's gonna I be a little really cook. not really cook but almost okay so it's gonna have that texture of of really creamy texture and then you've got the flavor of, of a cooked prawn okay so what we're gonna do next is start using the ingredients what i did uh, i have here um uh, olive puree, okay? So what I did is just uh, take some avocado and olives and some uh, lemon juice so it doesn't uh, get dark, okay? And I'm going to have a cream. So this cream is going to serve as a conductor, like a, a way to go to to have... Avocado, a, olive, and lemon juice, right? Yeah, that's it. So the idea is in every bite, you have to have a little bit of uh, olives, a little bit of prawn. So what we're going to do is just start. I'm going to put it here so you can see better. I don't know if we can. You can yeah. see here. Sorry. Yeah. The olives a little. Yeah, yeah, correct. They can be on the side. Perfect. Okay, that's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the cream, which is a cream with avocado and olives. So what we're gonna do is just make some small dots all across the plate. So in every bite, you get a little bit of everything. That is so cool. And it's looking so pretty with the, with the color, with the redness of the prawn, yeah. uh, green from the olive and the avocado. You're gonna see everything is is think about. So everything is thought. You're gonna see. Uh, so what we're gonna do next is take 
the olive, the tartar we did before, okay? And what we're gonna do is just drop a little bit of tartar in some spaces here. Yeah, this is the green olive tartar that we made. Yes, with a little bit. You can even add some spicy paprika. So it has a little bit of, of spicy and and I think in India, they're gonna like better if they have a little bit of spicy. Yeah, always. Yeah, no, <laughs> I've got the experience. So what we're gonna do next is use the cream, which was the sauce we did with the um, shell of the prawn and with the head of the prawn, okay? So this sauce, which is really thick, as you're gonna see, because it has a little bit of cream inside and it thickens the and with the with the um, with the ghee also it thickens the sauce okay so it has a little bit of tomato uh, shallots paprika uh, cream ghee and the prawns okay that so what we're going to do what you would make in india dots. actually yeah <laughs> small dots like india india is really colorful so the idea yeah. is making a dish which is really colorful like India and Spain everything so you have small dots of the sauce which is really tasty and it tastes a lot of like um, like the prawn so you don't lose the prawn uh, in between that olive flavor which is usually really intense yeah. so what we're going to do next is add a little bit of uh, um, the powder the black powder which is going to oh, break everything which is yeah, the black powder, which is everything here is green and red and a bit of white. So we're going to break it with a little bit of black. Okay. Love the color play on this. So many contrasting colors. It's amazing. Yes. So then we're going to come back to the same colors and we're going to add some shallots which we used also in the in the sauce and we have some shallots with some beetroot we, we use some uh, lemon juice and beetroot and we have uh, some shallots with, which became a little bit pink okay oh, so we, no, uh, chef, at, uh, back in india we do um, shallots with as well i know that's why i'm using them because i use uh, as as i told you before i i went to india in in bombay and I, I went to Caperberry, which is uh, the restaurant of Abhijit Saha. Yeah, and I did a, a whole menu over there. And I used some in the, in the dishes, some uh, shallots with beetroot, with uh, lemon juice. So I'm giving some small things from India to my Spanish dish. That's epic. So we call it uh, Sirke Wale Piaz. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to try to to say it because it's going to be really hard, but you can text me and tell me how to say it and I'll, I'll try at home. <laughs> so the idea is just place some of them because it's going to be give a little bit of sourness to the dish and it's going to give some crispiness to the dish. So yeah. what we're going to do next is just add a pinch of salt. Okay. The olive, watch out because the olive, the black olive, which is dried since it's marinated, it's going to be really salty. So you can use it as salt. And what we're going to do is just add a little bit of flakes of salt, okay, on top. Some flakes of salt, okay. And now we're going to finish with the sprouts, okay, with the, with the flowers and some other things. So here we have some sorrel, which is a, a sour cress, okay, sour uh, sprout. Yeah. And it has the colors of the dish which are red and green that's amazing so what we're going to do here is just place some leaves on top which is going to give some yeah, more color in india as well chefs we do get uh, the indian sorrel um, yeah as so i like it a lot the sorrel i like to make soups about uh, with with sorrel and i like to to make uh, salads and if you take the sprouts, which are really tender, they are really good. So we finish with this. Then we're going to use some begonia flower. Okay. That's a begonia, which is red. 
I mean, no sé si puedes. I don't know if you can have the yeah, camera yeah. closed. That's a flower, okay? So what we're going to do is just put some of these red flowers, which taste like. Uh, I think it tastes more kind of uh, green green apple. Okay. Okay. So we're putting some some flowers on top, which are gonna give some texture. Plus, this uh, flower is really really like uh, juicy. And then we're gonna finish with some uh, coriander leaves also. Chef, someone is asking that is this dish keto friendly? Uh, it could be, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. So, uh, what I'm adding is this, okay, which are the coriander uh, sprouts, which are a bit more intense than the actual uh, coriander, which is going to give a lot of uh, flavor in every bite. So that's the idea, just spreading everything. So you have, in every bite, you take a little bit of each thing. That is amazing. My mouth is watering. Like, I wish that I was not on this side of the screen and on that side of the screen. Uh, that's my only wish for this Saturday, guys. Um, you guys um, I can see that how much effort has gone into making that lovely plate uh, of uh, tapas. And that's uh, Chef Nicolas's version of uh, fusion tapas and how he has incorporated a bit of India uh, onto his plate um, with Spanish olives. And it is looking so colorful. It's, it's popping with bright colors, a lot of crunch, um, uh, meatiness from the prawns. And um, there is uh, both black and green olives that have been used. The sauce is from the prawn heads. Um, oh my God, my house is watering. There's also a bit of avocado in there. So yeah. So Smashing. the dish is done. That's the 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 my my twist on the tapa and and my twist on mixing Indian and Spanish cuisine and using for every for every recipe we've we've done three things with the olive, not counting yeah. the olive oil. I'm, I've done some tartar with the olive, some cream with the olive, and some crisp with the dried uh, black olive. That is epic. And I love that how uh, detailed and how thoughtful you are about creating a tapas. No wonder you won the best tapas of 2020. And um, uh, you next seem time, to next have time you come, Next time you come, you will try this dish. And we could do some other dishes. Absolutely. Jeff, if I now, because you have made, like, there is no way I, I can probably uh, match up to that kind of skill uh, when it comes to tapas. I'll have to come there, learn from you the art of it, and then probably apply it at home. But right now, I have a small inventory of ingredients um, that I had kept ready. But um, what do you think if somebody had to marinate olives at home that were to feel a little more Spanish? Then they well, had I, to feed Indian. What ingredients what I, do you use? The thing is, the the most important thing of making a dish like this is having the right ingredients and using your techniques as if you were doing a marinade or something like that. And you need to think about everything you're going to add to the marinade because you're going to add some flavor to the tapa too. So the tapa could be just the olive. The olive is a tapa in, in itself. So uh what you could do is just add which herb you want okay so you could do, use some rosemary some thyme some uh black pepper some pink pepper some garlic some if you can use five steps um it would be right to say that one step is the spice one step is the spice always, always. one would be I think, sorry, I didn't hear you. The second would be citrus. Yes, one citrus or sour because you can use vinegar too. You can use cool. vinegar or citrus because vinegar also add some different spectrum of flavor to the dish. So spice, citrus or sour. Third, if I had to say correctly, would be, let's say a herb. 
a herb is very important yes a and herb you can use, like i said rosemary sage uh, even parsley coriander yes yeah 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 that's it and then of course the fat which comes from the olive oil ideally yep yes that's it and, yeah i think and, we are, we are I, think, missing, i think you're missing salt salt and water too oh, yeah seasoning spicy or sweetness yes. um yeah that's uh, it. That's so seasoning. what i like to do i i like to keep it simple at home and i do the brine with a little bit of garlic a little bit of uh, thyme or uh, oregano or even rosemary i use usually some orange zest and lemon zest the two mm. things here from uh, valencia and then what we use usually is uh, just a regular brine with a little bit of water salt and and we start eating the olives that's it that's what i'm doing so, right now i want i want to know what's the twist you're going to do to to so, use i'm going to keep it very very simple chef i have these beautiful spanish olives that were delivered to me at my home and i have a ton of them i have a whole inventory with me so guys if you are looking to get spanish olives you can order them at home and uh, can, it's very they can, they, can, they can come to your place and do some uh, some tapas <laughs> or 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 i could send you tapas i can deliver them to your home as well i have a kitchen where i can prepare these tapas and deliver it not a bad idea at all so chef <laughs> because you've spoken um, you you've spoken such beautifully of the freshness of ingredients in spain um and i see there's a close association when it comes to ingredients so i thought why not bring in that freshness today into my recipe as well and do a classic sort of spanish olive where you get a bit of the sourness or the acid some sweetness very very fresh with herbs um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use um i have some parsley here um yeah. freshly chopped parsley which i have soaked in chilled water um i have uh, some freshly chopped coriander that i'm using then um uh, because we have a lovely ginger garlic connection in both uh yeah trees <laughs> we're using some minced uh, ginger i have uh, been able to source not the indian one but the big um nice lovely lime that you were using so it's it's fairly large almost yeah, uh, yeah. as we did the palm so i'm going to use the zest uh, of this um, for the recipe and a um, lot of lemon juice and because we sort of like this in, uh, this uh, mix of sweet spicy sour i'm going to add a touch of honey i have some honey, yeah. uh, natural Plus the honey was used at the beginning to to cook the olive because you cannot eat the olive from the tree because it's really bitter so yeah. that's where the brine came and at the beginning they used to have some honey and some some sour and 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 and, and I don't know how it's called in english i think it's, it's said enzymatic which uh, it oh. cooks with the enzymes of the of the honey that is pretty cool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tilt my camera a little so everybody can watch what is it that i am doing with my recipe without showing too much of my living room <laughs> <laughs> so here we i'm going to adjust that is perfect right perfect cool. yeah, yeah yeah i see everything because i'm 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 watching there because i have the the tv screen there that's why i'm losing sight somewhat sometimes i'm so watching I'm what saranj saranj is doing a two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil as the fat in this and after i add the olive oil i'm going to start adding my ingredients so because as chef you already mentioned that olives have a touch of salt so i tend to not add too much salt just half a teaspoon yeah just to get the marinade uh, rolling yes um, so to keep to keep the salt and not lose the salt from the olive 
Yeah. Because you well, want to add some stuff, so you're going to add some salt to keep it everything like it is. So I'm adding freshly cracked pepper, black pepper, about um, one teaspoon. So a generous amount of pepper because we love uh, our spice. So today the pepper, the spiciness is coming from the pepper. And then something that I did not show you, which is roasted coriander seeds. I sort of pounded them and I've made a fresh coarse powder. So I'm adding a teaspoon of that. So it's very, very fresh, freshly roasted. And my entire room is sort of filled with the aroma of this uh, roasted coriander. So Saranj, you're, you're having your olives uh, filled with uh, uh, bell pepper, I think. Oh yeah, I'm using the pimento stuffed olives, the green pepper one, the green uh, olives with pimento stuffed. And you can, you know, you can like um, fill them with anchovies and with other stuff, which is really good because you can, even in a small bite, you can have a lot of flavor. That is amazing. That's a great, great tip. Thank you so much, chef. So I've added now about a tablespoon of um, freshly pounded ginger. And uh, to this, as you suggested, uh, that lemon zest can make a big, big, big difference. So I am going to zest out some lemon. So we this is our traditional sort of grater that we keep at home. Which has four no, no, different. I, I, I have the same. I have the same one in the kitchen, but this one is uh, a fancy one, which is easier to make. A smaller yeah, recipes to finish to finish dishes at the at the at the table. <laughs> so you can even you can even grate the olive, which it, it makes like a really small puree. That sounds a bit. That sounds like a great idea. Grating the olive. I've never tried that. I think I will. I will. Now, after this uh, session, I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> With the lemon zest, I am now going to add lots and lots of fresh parsley. And this is like crisp and fresh. I bought it this morning. So it's it. and blooming. Plus, in here in Spain, we use a lot of parsley. So oh, that's one of the ingredients we use for the marinades in, in the olives. So because it's Not fusion, so I'm using one tablespoon of parsley and one tablespoon of coriander, both. And last but not the least, the, as you said, in the old world, honey uh, would be used to take away that slight bitterness that we have. I'm going to add about two to three tablespoons. So I'm adding two tablespoons, but uh, people who like it to be slightly more sweeter can do three tablespoons of the same. Oh, there is another one, acid, as we had discussed. So there goes lemon juice, about one tablespoon. So you see all the tips you gave me have come in handy. There's herb, there's spice, there yeah. is uh, fat, there is uh, acid and um, the, the, there the, is the oh there yeah. Is. And now we are going to, oh my God, they look delicious and luscious. So easy, right? It is so easy to yeah. make like a olive, uh, Spanish I, I olive. I want to, to go there and take one, but I couldn't. <laughs> I would love. To, I, I would love to have one. <laughs> I would love to trade this bowl with that plate of carpaccio any day. This is all yours. Chef. No, I, I. I would tell you to make some Indian recipe with uh, olives next time if you come to Spain, or if or if I go to to India. We will make it happen next year, for sure. Yeah, yeah, we could. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. My version of fusion Indian Spanish olives are ready. Very, very simple to make at home. Yeah, but you, you gave them your twist with your spices. You can 
even make it spicier if you like it. So you can give them, you can even make three or four marinades so you can have them settle at the table because, uh, because tapas are sharing and having your family at the table, having your family go with you to the bar. So making three or four types of, of uh, olives with different ingredients, with different spices, I think that's the idea of tapas. And that sounds great. Uh, I think uh, I'm staying with my girlfriend here in Mumbai. So today I'm going to be enjoying this um, bowl of uh, Spanish olives with her. I think she's going to enjoy this. I think we will fix ourselves some wine or gin and tonic and yeah. uh, enjoy this little Saturday, which we would have enjoyed in Spain otherwise. Uh, nothing comes close to that. But... Um, you know, we should make something of nothing, I guess. No, no, of course. Nowadays, you need to to keep it positive and, and, and yeah. try to improvise things at home, try to innovate, try to make different stuff, if you can, with olives, of course. And, and now in India, I don't know, you're in quarantine right now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the lockdown is gone. And I am I am heading to Delhi, so I will be under quarantine for seven days because I would have taken a flight. Okay, so you will eat a lot of olives, which give a lot of, of power, <laughs> and which are really good for your health too. That is true. So, Chef Nicholas, I think it has been incredible having you here on the live from all the way from Spain. How about we take a couple of questions from our audience? Whoever has been patient enough to still stay and stick around in the live <laughs> because we've spoken a lot. Um, yeah, it's been almost an hour. Yeah. So if you have any questions, guys, um, let's take them up. It's a question for well, you, Chef. What is the difference between green and black olives? So the main in difference, I think, it's the, the taste. Okay. So the the green ones are a bit sweeter which have a, a different flavor and the, the the black ones are a bit harder which are also really good usually i like better the black ones and the green ones but it depends because you can use them for different things uh, green olives are great for having as a snack black olives you can use them to make uh, bread for example and it gives the bread that really strong flavor. So yeah. the main difference, I think, is the the, the flavor of the, the olive. So you would not you choose a, them. You would choose them for the flavor. Yeah, of course. Not the color. The color sometimes gives something, but the flavor is the most important thing. Amazing, because a lot of people just feel like, oh, it's just the color that's different. And I no, think no, it's very no. important for them to know they taste. Uh, they both have very distinct taste. Yeah, that's it. So you oh, have recipe. a question. Yeah, recipes look yum. I want to try olives with spices. Where can I find your olives? Well, uh, guys, all my recipes um, are on olivesfromspain.in. That's a website. Uh, we have a bunch of recipes there. And um, we have, of course, been able to Indianize them uh, by using our local ingredients, as Chef suggested. Um, there is nothing better than local produce. In fact, um, you know what? I don't want to leave it, leave the screen, but I'm going to quickly get um, an Indian marinade that I made yesterday. So I want to show Chef Nicholas. So everybody hold on for 30 seconds. I'm going to run to my kitchen and get it. It would be really cool if he hadn't any trousers on. He had like boxers and went running outside. <laughs> got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I didn't want to waste this opportunity to show Chef Nicholas what I did. So I recorded a recipe yesterday um, of, uh, we call them puri olives. So it's a very traditional um, classical spice blend uh, yeah. that's made differently in different states of southern India um, and we call it mulaga puri. And what, do, mulaga what, puri. what are the ingredients of the recipe? So it's got two kinds of lentil. Um, yeah. uh, uh, one is uh, white and the other is yellow. 
Uh-huh. Uh, we slow roast them in a bit of oil, and then what we do is we slow roast some chilies, um, some um, oh, yeah, <laughs> that bright popping color uh, <laughs> is from those freshly dry roasted chilies. Lots of sesame. We add white sesame. Uh, yeah, to yeah. That. You roast it before or just leave yeah. it plain? Uh, dry roasted, yeah. And we add this interesting ingredient we call asafoetida. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, no. It's it's sort of a very very spicy pungent salt uh, in many ways. If I had to describe that to you, um, it's got a very sharp flavor, just like mustard would. It's, yeah, I will try to. I, I will try to order some here in Spain to try. It. And then you you I, make. I, I think I think I've got some friends that have some at home, so I will I will try to ask. And then you add some curry leaf, again dry roasted. Yeah. Make a nice uh, blend out of it. Uh, take some ghee uh, and toss the olives with ghee and the powder. That's it. I know it. It looks really nice. It looks really nice and really tasty. And oh, I wish I could <laughs> make you taste this. It's beautiful. I, I would love to try them. I think it's going to be a bit more spicy than I'm used to, but I'm sure it's going to be really yeah. good. <laughs> so yeah guys i hope that answered the question that um, the recipes are available and you can try them out um and you can make them at home very very simple to do oh, so i guess uh, oh do olives have a lot of calories i think looking at chef nicolas and me and the way we look we we'll, we look absolutely okay so <laughs> i don't think so uh Olives have a lot of calories. Um, seven olives have what? Thirty-five to forty. Yeah, not uh, not too much. Plus, calories. it's really healthy as uh, they have a lot of omega three, and they've got uh, really good properties for your cardiovascular system. So, which is really good. So they are great to have as a tapa or as anything. Yeah, I think they're they're an incredibly beautiful snack. Um, so if you're looking to gorge on something midnight munchies are happening uh, guys olives are pretty much very very low on calories that's not bad great few fun questions so guys yes. i think we have uh, health chef nicolas more than he anticipated he's like this chef from india keeps talking <laughs> uh, i'm fine now I'm, I need to go to the kitchen afterwards and and yeah. start prepping start prepping the service. And the same, uh, Shiv, I'll be also heading to my kitchen um, where everything is already prepped. I just need to go and be like, uh, is everything ready? <laughs> because no, today, guys, I don't know. I don't know. They are coming right now at ten thirty. So I think they are coming now and they'll be starting prepping. And today we're gonna sell a lot of. Uh, Paellas, which is the the biryani, the Spanish biryani. Oh, and you you know the Spanish paella. I love the generous amount of saffron you guys use. Yeah, we use a lot because in Spain we use a lot of saffron. We use a lot of paprika. We use spices. It's not as plain as the north of Europe. In the south, it's mm, kind of uh, Indian cuisine with a lot of spices. In the south of Spain, if you go to Andalusia. There is a lot of saffron. There is a lot of olives. There is everything is really tasteful. So, if from India, people had to come to Spain, they would love to eat Spanish food. They would right? love. They might have it a little bit uh, plain, I think, because okay. you're not, think it does it doesn't have that much spicy. But you can order some chilies at by the side and and have them to compensate. That's epic. Epic. So thank you so much, Chef, again for joining us um, on today's uh, fusion tapa session with Olive from Spain and India. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I really hope that uh, next year I can actually visit you to your restaurant and try that carpaccio, which I can almost yeah, taste. Yeah, I would love. I would love. I would. I will try to remember the recipe from to, from this year to the next one. And if, if I don't, I will. I will improvise. As always, <laughs> and we will do something really great. And I'm hoping you come, and I'm sure you're gonna have a great time if you come to Spain. You're gonna love it. 
because I loved being to India. So I'm sure you're going to love uh, here in Spain. Uh, that is Chef Nicolas, guys. Uh, let's say a thank you to him. Best Spanish tapas for 2020. Uh, quite the legend. And um, we are waiting to meet him next year. So thank you so much, Chef. I am looking forward thank to you. seeing you. Thank you for sharing your morning with us and your uh, tapas recipe. Slice, peel, grate, squeeze, mix, boil, fry, sprinkle, roast, blend. Add the star of the dish. Olives from Spain. Green, black, stuffed olives. Are you ready to cook? Any time is a good time to enjoy olives from Spain. Discover recipes with olives from Spain and make the difference.